My name is Andrew Stotts, and I'll be your host as we continue our journey into the teachings of Dr. W. Edwards Deming. Today, I'm continuing my discussion with David P. Langford, who has devoted his life to applying Dr. Deming's philosophy to education, and he offers us his practical advice for implementation. Today's topic is the deadly disease of having an employee of the month. David, take it away. <laughs> uh, yeah, this, this is actually one of my favorite topics. So I, I thought it'd be fun for us to talk about it today. So you just may win employee of the month by, you know, coming up yeah, with this, huh? There you go. So right away, if you, if you don't understand any, any teachings about Dr. Deming or, or background or things like that, you might be saying, what? what, you know, what do you mean? And, and maybe, uh, maybe you were employee of the month one month or uh, teacher of the year or student of the month or what it, whatever we want to think about in, in terms of singling people out. So, uh, so what's, what's, what's wrong with that? And, and how could that be a deadly disease? Well, in one of the pre previous uh, podcasts, we were talking about special and common cause variation. And uh, we kind of went through that. And then talked a little bit about what Deming called deadly diseases. And he just said that you know, there's two de deadly diseases, treating special cause variation as if it's common and treating common cause variation as if it's special. So why is having employee of the month a deadly disease? Because it falls into category number two. Mm. You're taking common cause variation in the system and treating it as if it's special. Um, and it, happen, it happens everywhere. It happens in the military. It happens in schools. And, you know, we've been sold a bill of goods <laughs> uh, years ago for, in management. And uh, it's become pervasive in the way people think about what to do. So a manager doesn't know what to, what to do to motivate their people. And they think their job is to motivate people. So they say, well, you know, we'll have a teacher of the year or, or we'll have employee of the month or employee of the week. And, you know, that ought to, that ought to fix things, right? Student so, of the week, student of the student month. Student of the week, make, make people happier. So I'll never forget uh, when my, one of my daughters was in third grade and she came home and she had a certificate as a student of the month. And uh, I looked at it and and because she brought it up to me and, and showed it and she was somewhat proud of, proud of it, and uh, and I looked at it and then I didn't I was thinking how do I handle this because I I know the problems that psychologically these things can cause and bullying and all kinds of things that can result from it and so I looked at the certificate and I looked at her and I said well honey tell me this uh, so what did you do this month that was especially especially great that sort of singled you out uh, over all the rest of the losers in the class so, and she looked at me and she looked at the certificate she did that a couple times and then she got this big grin on her face and then she looked up at me and she said dad you know it was my turn <laughs> we have 360 students, 65 students in the class, and they give it every day. So we all get it at some point, Dad. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So third grade, she saw through this. She knew it's, this is just a silly game dreamed up by the people who are running the place. Uh, and even as a student, is, is, if you figure out that this is, this is nuts, <laughs> Can you do anything about it? Well, not without becoming insubordinate or sent to the principal's office or, right? There's obviously something wrong with you if you've pointed out a problem with the system about, you know, how, how the, they're managing everybody in the system. Mm. Instead, we should be saying, hey, well, tell me more about that. Why, you know, what, what's the problem with that? And, so you know, student, student of the month, can you be student of the month nine months in a row? Yeah, that was what I was going to say, because you could also have an abuse, you know, one abuse of it is just to kind of randomly go through students. Another abuse, abuse of it is constantly giving it to one person. Yeah, I always ask people, you know, that don't believe that they're doing anything wrong or damaging to children with these kinds of things. They'll say, you know, oh, well, you know, you know, I, I can judge or I can, 
you know, pick out who's who's best or whatever. Well, again, can you be student of the month nine months in a row? And I've done this for 40 years now, and I've never had a teacher say, well, yes. But statistically, the answer is yes. Yep. <laughs> if you have a student that actually is exceptional <laughs> and and deserving of being pointed out to other people as, as the top student, well, they probably just don't do that one month out of nine, right? Mm -hmm. They're probably working like that or being like that all the time, right? And oh. you're not actually helping them <laughs> uh, sort of cope with the situation when you're singling them out above everybody else and then pointing to them as, as the model. And if we go back to, you know, the basics and we think about that good hearted teacher who, who's or administrator who's thought, hey, I want to bring recognition. You know, I want to, you know, I, I want people to feel better about, you know, things. And so, hey, employee of a month, what a great idea. They're coming from a good intention. But, yeah, you know, that, tell uh, us more about that. Dr. Deming said we're being killed by good intentions. <laughs> right. And uh, that, that's exactly right. And he often talked about, too, sometimes the best thing to do is nothing. Mm. If, you, if you don't really understand what it is you're doing and the effects of it, and maybe you're just doing what was done to you <laughs> or passed down from one generation to the next, et cetera, et cetera, and you don't really understand what it is you're doing, you'd be much better off just to do nothing, <laughs> do none of those things. Uh, it's always fascinating to me. Um, schools that have a lot of bullying also have a lot, a lot of this singling people out and, and uh, pointing them out as either um, on the top end or the low end of the system, et cetera. And then what happens after school? Well, you know, I'll show you student of the month. You know, it's uh, kind of reminds me of, of that bumper sticker. You know, there's bumper stickers that say my, my student was student of the month at such and such elementary, et cetera. And right. then there's the bumper stickers that say my student beat up the student of the month or beat up your student, this student of the month. I've seen those uh. where people are, you know, they're, they're, they're proud of <laughs> that or they think it's funny or whatever it might be. Mm. But this is tampering. Uh, with society and with the systems and management and people's, uh, you know, feelings and all kinds of things. Um, and it has long lasting effects that we have no idea what, what we've done to students 60, 70 years later. Um, my own mother who died at 86, um, she often would tell a story about <clears throat> that she really loved to draw and et cetera, et cetera. And then she got into an elementary classroom and they were in an art class and they were supposed to draw something. And the teacher chose only the best drawings to put on the wall. Mm. And, and these, these are the best drawings. From that point on, she decided she couldn't draw. And for the next 80 years, she would not ever even attempt a stick figure or, or anything because of that one small instant instance where we, you know, you know, want to hold somebody up and say, here, why can't you be like this person? Right. And so, it's, so, it's, it's very damaging. So what, what to do instead, right? Yeah. What, what do we do instead? So let's say that you're in a classroom and you do have somebody doing uh, some uh, something exemplary, whether that's writing a paper, you know, making a drawing, performing a mu on a musical instrument, or, or whatever it might be, and uh, instead of uh, pointing them out and giving them some kind of an award or student of the month award or, or whatever it might be, um, one thing that you could do is honor them by allowing them to share what it is they've done. You know, I. <clears throat> I got this uh, idea actually from Dr. Deming and stuff, but hey, here's, here's something really exemplary. And the way I would approach it is I would come back to that student and say, you know, I, I really like what you've done here. And this is, this is really mm -hmm. amazing. Would you be willing 
to share with everybody else in the class how, how you did this. How did, how did you work this through? Now, that's much different than me coming in and saying, oh, this is the student of the week, and I'm so, I'm so proud of Johnny, and da 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 And all the rest of the students in the class look at that and say, you know, well, I, obviously, he's brown-nosing the teacher, and or they come up with some kind of a reason about why you're doing that. Mm. It's totally different if I say, hey, you know, in this last project, um, there were several really interesting projects, and I've asked a couple of people if they'd share what they did and how they did it and how they worked that through. And uh, they've agreed to share that. And so maybe they read their short story or whatever, but then we're going to ask them, you know, well, how did you do that? How, how did you think that through? And how did you create the plot? And, and what did you do to do that? Well, when you're honoring somebody in that way, um, the, the rest of the people in the class are sitting there listening to that and they're thinking, oh, oh, that's how they did that, right? It's not just saying, oh, you're, you're, just, you're just an innate great person, right? You actually did something that enabled you to do something great. And so other people in the class could start to say, oh, I could do that. And it's an amazing thing, like in elementary schools, something so simple as a student says, well, you know, the way I did this is I found a place at home that was quiet and I made sure I went there every day and worked on this paper in that quiet place. Well, we could now take that special cause, right? And we could mm -hmm. transfer that common cause and we could have a discussion in a class. Hey, everybody in the class, think of some quiet place that you could work or you could do something. Uh, I remember one elementary school, uh, there was one, one child that consistently kept doing really well. And they said, well, how do you do this? And he said, well, I got a desk at home. And, and it was a very, very poor school. And uh, kids were coming from very, very poor families, et cetera. And uh, teacher found out that almost only one child out of 30 had actually had a desk of their own at school. So she started asking the students, what, what can we do about this? And the students came up with, I thought it was an ingenious idea. And they got old cardboard boxes and they all created their own desks. Mm. Right? And that became a class project and everybody took their own desk home. And then there's information that goes home to the parents. It says, hey, it's really great if your child spends some time at their desk each night when they're doing their homework or getting caught up on things or what they're working through. So <clears throat> special causes are not always bad. Sometimes they can teach us things that can be applied to the entire system that can make a, you know, a big difference. And um, so, so what I want to understand, now let's just imagine that, okay, we start to kind of celebrate the something about a, a student. I, I have a student of mine in my ethics class that I teach, and that guy did a whole picture of the whole class on one big piece of paper, and he laminated it and he gave it to me, and and it's just amazing. Now it's not the way I think because I don't. I think more linearly, but he really liked pictures. But for the people in the class and others that I've shown it to, it really helped them kind of pull it all together. So that was you know sharing trying to get him to share, you know, what he's doing. But it's not, we, we, it's not just what, what he did. <laughs> it has to be how he did it, <laughs> mm. right? That's what you have to get them to share. Otherwise, it comes off as an award. I'm, I'm awarding this person because I'm going to, I'm going to get, have them come up and share that they did this great thing. Well, the thing is great. And, and I'm sure everybody in the class could see, wow, that's, that's really awesome. But if you want to transfer that, to other people doing great stuff, they have to have kind of some insight about well, how did you do that? And, you know, would you be able, willing to sort of teach a side class on how, how to do this for other people that might want to do this? Mm. Mm. And I think that's, that's a fantastic honor. You're still honoring that individual and, and rewarding them in a way, if you want to think of it that way, because think what you've done, you, you've taken the class time of everybody to allow this one individual to share something. Well, that's a, that's a great honor. It's a huge yep. honor. 
within that. But as a teacher, you want a large number of the other students to start to be able to do these kinds of things, right? Mm. You'd like to see the same level of development, same level of capability uh, uh, with a lot of other people. So you have to think about, well, how are we going to get there? Well, one way to get there is to have, have these students explain it. And you, you can imagine an employee of the month. I know how it goes um, in companies that people are like, oh, my God, tomorrow's the deadline for employee of the month. Who should we do? <laughs> we right? got to cram, cram for employee of the month. <laughs> yeah. So the point is, is that, you know, a lot of times, just like performance reviews, it's just some mad rush at the end. Uh, is what you're saying that instead of doing an employee of the month type of reward, um, that what we should be doing is incorporating that in our daily life instead of saying, you know, incorporating seeing things that are happening that are, you know, valuable for the whole group and bringing that to light on a regular basis rather than setting on every month we're going to do this or something like that. How, how would you describe it from that perspective? Yeah, I thought of a, a, another example. I remember one time my flights were all messed up and connections were bad. And I I was supposed to start a seminar at for the military the next morning. And I was actually staying on the base with uh, the base hotel. <laughs> and so I got in really late. It was like one o'clock in the morning or 1.30. And then I had to get up and, and I was tired and exhausted. Anyway, so I go to check in. And this person that's checking me in is, you know, they're doing a really great job and, you know, talking to me and everything else. And then I happen to look up on the wall and there's her picture on the wall as employee of the month. And, you know, I, I can't uh, <laughs> stand it. I have to say something. I said, wow, I didn't, I didn't realize I was talking to employee of the month. And she got all embarrassed and everything. And I said, so what did you do this month? That was so awesome. And she said, again, she said, it was my turn. So if you think about it, you know, all the money spent making the picture, giving the honor, they probably had some kind of an award ceremony where, you know, they had brought all the employees in and you, you had to be there. And then she gets announced as employee of the month and is, you know, are you happy for play the money well yeah but immediately psychologically and that's what you know Demi talked about with profound knowledge is psychologically you start to think about well you know i worked hard this month <laughs> you know and the person next to me i know was working really hard this month why why didn't they get employee of the month and so then your your mind immediately starts to wonder you know oh well it's got to be some kind of game or something going on or the manager just likes her or there's some kind of sexual thing happening or all kinds of crazy stuff can happen but if you took the exact same thing <laughs> where you said you know uh we have an employee and things were crazy one night and this person handled it with grace and ease and organized things and everything and you know i'd like so and so explain to us, you know, how did you do that? How do you cope with that? How did you sort of tamper down the angst that was coming your way? And how did you deal with that? And what did you think of? And you could actually learn something <laughs> from somebody, somebody yeah. who's done something really exemplary. You could imagine that person saying, well, what I did is I stepped from out behind, I stepped from behind the counter and I went to the person that was most vocal and I, I, I talked to them about, you know, where are you going? Uh, yeah, it's a birthday. I'm trying to get there. I'm so frustrated. I've been delayed in other, yeah, okay. You know, I tried to listen to them and try to then, you know, if I could convince that person, you know, that just hang on or whatever, you know, that type of thing is the type of thing that we could learn from it. So maybe I can summarize what, what I'm taking away from it. Um, the first thing you talked about was the idea of, treating a common cause as a special cause, the employee of the month, when in fact, you know, it's just a rotation in that case, really. Uh, you also talked about the idea that, you know, be careful because signaling, uh, sig uh, signaling, signal, signaling out one person uh, can lead to bullying. You know, if you put someone on a pedestal, someone's going to say, you know, I'm going to knock them down. So that's also kind of an unintended consequences of that. 
And then you also highlighted, this one I thought was interesting, was the impact on non-recipients. You know, how do people feel? And, you know, that didn't get it. And um, now you also talked about the idea of maybe an alternative is letting someone share. You see something impressive, interesting, different, let them share. And in particular, you said, have them share how they did it, not what they did, but how they did it so that people can learn. Because, yeah, if, if a guy started sharing how he did this drawing and stuff, it may not mean that much to me because I'm more linear. But if he talked about, it, you know, what, instead of talking about what he did, if he talked about, well, you know, I thought, how do I make these connections between this? And, you know, I did it through this, but, you know, you could do it through that. Um, and then you also talked about honoring and rewarding you know, and, and, and trying to, you know, give people a chance to share. And then the last thing I, I thought about what you said, it says, um, of, of an employee saying, but wait a minute, I, I worked hard this month too. You know, is this just favoritism? Is this just a game? Is this just a random thing? May, Those maybe are, I should only work hard when the manager's watching. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> How do I game this thing? All right. Well, anything you would add? Uh, yeah, I just you made me think of a, a, another quick story. But uh, in one of my seminars with teachers, uh, we we're going over this very concept. And uh, I was trying to get them to think about ways that they could operate differently to optimize their whole class or the school, etc. Anyway, at the break, a teacher came up to me and he said, Oh, my gosh, he said, this happened to me. I said, What do you mean? He said, oh, he said, when I got out of college, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. And I ended up getting a job at uh, selling insurance at this insurance company and everything. Well, they had all these extrinsic rewards. And he said, at, at first it was, you know, just really great, you know, sell so many policies and you could win a trip to Aruba and you, you can do this. And, and then they're always having to dream up, dream up a new, a new thing, a new, cause you have to keep upping the ante if you want to mm. keep seeing people sort of jump through the hoops, you know, to get there. He said, after about five years of that, he said, I was so sick of playing that game and being manipulated. And he said, and basically I had won everything that they could come up with. <laughs> and I just got to thinking about what's the, what's the, what do I really enjoy? And what's the really purpose of being here? And he said, I quit when I got my teaching degree. Now I'm a teacher and I make half as much money as a, or less than I did before. And he said, but I'm happy. This, this is a rewarding profession of what I'm doing. And, and uh, I don't want to see this same kind of manipulation coming into the system. He, sees, he said, I'm keenly aware of this with my own students. And is the administration trying to bring this kind of thinking in to manipulate me? Because he, he's been through it. So. Yep. yep. So to wrap it up, I think I'm just going to challenge the listeners, the viewers, if you've got employee of the month, if you've got student of the month, if you've got teacher of the month going on, this is permission to start questioning it, start discussing it, start thinking about alternatives because there are many, many challenges uh, that, that David's raised today. So David, on behalf of everyone at Deming Institute, I want to thank you again for the discussion. I think it was very interesting. For listeners, remember to go to Deming.org to continue your journey. This is your host, Andrew Stotts, and I want to leave you with one of my favorite quotes from Dr. Deming. People are entitled to joy in 